So to begin with, I'm going to give you an overview of the Final Cut Pro interface. And the Final Cut Pro is based in four main windows, and they're arranged in this clockwise formation to help you remember the general workflow you'll be using. We start here on the upper left in this window called the browser. The browser is an organizational window where you can keep all of your clips and sequences and the other elements you'll use when building your project. Final Cut Pro has little folders here, and, and they're called bins. And you can store whatever you want inside bins, clips, individual clips like these, or uh, you can put one bin inside of another bin. There's no uh, limitation there. You can also just have clips sitting in the root area of the browser window there. So you can organize these pretty much any way you want. If you double click on a clip, it's going to open up into the viewer window over here. And if you double click on a sequence, you see the different icon here for sequences, double click on a sequence, it opens up in the canvas and timeline. And I'll describe those in more detail in a minute. The columns here on the right provide additional information about the shots and sequences and elements in your browser window. There is a tremendous number of columns here. There's about 50 different columns to provide a lot of information about your shots. Some of this is hard-coded information like the frame size or the video rate. And there's also a lot of information that you can enter yourself uh, to help you remember what your shots are or the way they're arranged in your sequence, such as descriptions of the shots or the scenes that they come from and so forth. You can customize this in a great deal, and you'll see that later in the program, how you can organize and rearrange the different columns and whatnot in the browser window. You can see that there's also some color coding going on here. You can assign these colors to sequences or to bins or to individual clips. And when you open a clip or a sequence with a color code, you'll see those colors appear here in the tabs of the viewer or the canvas. And the viewer window is really designed to help you choose the section of the shot that you want to edit in your movie. And you can do that by setting the in and out points by using the I and O keys to set a little area, the range of which will be used when you edit this into the movie. There are a lot more controls in here that you'll see we'll learn about as you go through the program. You can also view the audio component of your clip by looking at the stereo, or sometimes this will say mono, depending on the type of audio associated with your clip, as well as a filters tab where you would apply special effects and a motion tab where you can do things like scale, rotation, and so forth. All of this will be covered in much more detail later in the program. The canvas window is where you view the projects as you're constructing them. And the canvas and the timeline are tied together. Whatever you see going on in one window is the same thing going on in the other. And you'll see as I scrub around in this window here in the timeline, the canvas window updates. And if I drag around in the canvas, you'll see the timeline updates. These are tied together because they show the same information. There's more than one tab here because I've got more than one sequence to work with. You can rearrange tabs by just dragging them and reordering them in the window up here. And you can do that in all of the different windows. Just by clicking on a tab and rearranging them, you can customize it so that the tabs you need are readily available. And if you click on any of those tabs, it will bring that information to the front. And again, notice that the canvas and the timeline are always linked together. So whichever one you're looking at in the canvas is the same one you'll see in the timeline and so forth. These over here are different markers and different color markers that you can use to indicate different things. You may have some markers to specify mistakes that you want to fix later or other markers, the audio elements that you want to add in for special effects or so forth. In the timeline, you can see that there are tracks. You can indicate the, the video component and the audio component. In this case, we've got two audio tracks and a video track here. There are elements on additional video tracks, and there's a second video track. You can see this is the title, where it says Step 4, Adding Water. That's that title there. It shows up on track V2. If I turn that off, you'll see that the item goes away. And if I turn it back on, it appears. So these different tracks can be used for building composites or more complex special effects. And then here in the timeline, you get a sense of how long each clip is. This is a longer clip than this little short one here. You see we have little transition effects that show little transitions, like in this case, a little cross dissolve between one shot and another, and so forth. Again, we're going to go through much more detail of all the aspects of using these windows as you go through and build your actual projects later in the lesson, and so forth. You can do a lot more in the timeline, as you'll learn later in the program. You can change the duration of shots or move them around. Uh, there's a whole lot more details, and we'll be getting to all of that later in the lesson. 
Um, there is little buttons up here that control special different types of effects like linking or uh, snapping or the uh, ripple sequence markers, and all these will be covered later in the program. These little buttons can be added or removed. They can be customized. And again, you'll learn all about different ways to do these things as we go forward deeper into the program.